Hello, good evening, and welcome to Mind Your Head. This is the second event in our series, and um, we're very pleased to welcome you. And hope you have a wonderful time. And I'm going to hand over to Magda and Ito. Okay, uh, good evening, and welcome to Charing Cross Library. My name is Aitor, and this is Magda. Hello, good evening. Um, we are, as I said, in Charing Cross Library in the basement. So don't worry if you hear some rumbling from time to time. That's because the Piccadilly line is quite close to us, and sometimes we can hear it. As, as my colleague said, welcome to our second event in the series Mind Your Head. This is going to be called uh, Dancing in a Bubble, and you are going to find out later why. And this is, as all the other events in our series, is about people, normal people, talking about their hobbies and the things they like, um, and how the, it, these hobbies have helped us to cope with, with the stresses and the, and the, and the things that these um, uh, lockdowns and COVID have been throwing to us. So maybe without any more introduction, we can start talking about a bit why dancing and why dancing is good for you. Yeah, <clears throat> both Aita and I have been dancing for quite some years. I mean, dancing uh, has many positive effects if you look it up. Um, it's a physical activity, so like any sports, um, it helps to increase strength and overall is quite positive for your health. Um, <clears throat> it can help with uh, managing uh, weight um, and dancing. Each partner, even though you dance together, is meant to hold themselves up, so it's um, weight bearing. That means that it helps to uh, keep bones strong, can help uh, prevent osteoporosis. Um, and just being active um, is just good uh, aerobic exercise. It um, makes sure it helps to um, strengthen the, uh, the heart, uh, makes for strong lungs. Um, dancing, the key thing really about dancing is being able to move from one foot to the other very gracefully. To be able to do that, um, what dancers develop is good balance, uh, which is something that uh, people find quite helpful overall in life as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And, um, and there is also the, the social aspect of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I was the other day I was watching telly and, and they were telling that actually, well, while you are doing exercise, sometimes if you engage your mind thinking about something, concentrating on something while you are doing exercise, it's actually good for your brain as well. And while you are dancing, of course, you have to engage your brain all the time because there are steps you have to do, it's movement you have to do, there are the dancers on the floor that you have to avoid. So it's, it's something very, very good for your for your brain as well. It's very much recommended for all people as well. Yes, it's it's um, and as I said, it's kind of uh, it also involves other people. So uh, it can help people who feel maybe a little bit lonely. It can help to just uh, get into interacting with other people. Um, I myself had have, have had periods where I was incredibly stressed and uh, going dancing has been very beneficial. Um, I had to concentrate on steps. I was together with people who were very friendly, who were at the same place because we wanted to have a good time. Uh, and then the dancing itself, one has to really focus on that moment there. Uh, there's nice music um, and it's kind of in itself almost being a little bit in a bubble uh, and all the worries uh, mm -hmm. fall away. Um, yes, it's for me the same as been. I mean, if, if, if essentially when I started dancing, I didn't start dancing. By the way, we are talking about ballroom dancing because that's our thing. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's helpful for any, any kind of dancing. Um, when I started dancing, I basically started uh, doing it just for the social aspect rather than any other thing. When I arrived in London, like more than 20 years ago, I had very, very poor English um, and I and I found it very, very hard to to meet people, not just because of my English, it's because, because I was very, very shy. I find it very, very hard to interact with people anyway. So one day someone asked me, or told me, why don't you join an evening class or something? But the truth is that I was working very long hours and I have my English classes in the evening and everything. And so I thought, oh my God, I don't want to go learning another thing just, just for the sake of meeting people. So I went and one day someone put a leaflet on my hand about ballroom dancing. 
And the truth is that I've never been any close to a ballroom in, in my life. I didn't know anything about dancing, but I just went uh, uh, there just, just to see how it was like. And, and it was quite an experience, the truth be said. <laughs> Don't laugh, it was really. <laughs> I mean, when, when I went there, I couldn't understand a thing that people were saying, so I just copy everybody, what they were doing. And, and suddenly I found myself dancing, being led actually, by a very, very tall man in drag, uh, leading me into a cha-cha-cha. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, it was a bit <laughs> strange, but I kept going. And, and to tell you the truth, that, that's what it took. It just uh, an hour there and I was hooked. Uh, because dancing is one of these things that either, if you love it, you really, really like it. And it was the perfect thing for me, uh, because it's a perfect way with, with interact with people. I realized that for just one or two minutes, the length of a, a full song, I could have someone's attention fully focused on me and I didn't have to say anything. So it was perfect. <laughs> it was really, really perfect for me. And from then on, I just kept going and, and kept going to classes. And I met most of my friends on, on dance floors. I, I met Marta on the dance floors. Yes, somewhere. probably in the Rivoli. Yes, yes, probably. Yes. Yeah, my start into dancing was a little bit different. Uh, I grew up in a very rural area in Germany. Um, and uh, one thing that parents did there is uh, send their kids off when they were 14, 15 uh, for a dance class kind of over there. Um, um, usually there are very big weddings, other uh, family gatherings, um, village parties, and dancing is actually part of that. Um, so kids get sent off uh, usually 10 weeks or one day a week in the evening, a little bit of dancing. At that time I actually didn't really, I had a very good friend and we were more playing doctrines by <laughs> dancing rather than dancing. Uh, but then a friend of mine introduced me here in London to dancing and a little bit like with ITOR, I started it and I was completely hooked. And I know a lot of people who take up dancing and it's, I don't quite know what it is. I mean, I've done lots of different sports and you know, when you do sport, you have these endorphins that get released and that give a happy feeling which helps with, you know, being positive, uh, cope with stress and all, all the other things. But dancing is quite different to that. I mm -hmm. think it's just connecting to music and, um, you know, uh, dancing together with one person, feeling the music together is just uh, very, very, very positive. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and then there's also, uh, I've met also friends from, uh, through dancing, uh, who I would never have met otherwise. It's It's such a, a mixer kind of yeah. dancing is done by people from from all social backgrounds, uh, all types of jobs, uh, mm -hmm. and you can meet them on the dance floor. Also, all ages, uh, from you know some some very um, dedicated dancers go to social dance events with their little kiddies. Some even with babies actually. So they had a good yes. start, and, and people can be very old and still enjoy dancing. Um, mm -hmm. Um, and I think we probably met uh, at a place called the Rivoli. It's a very special place in mm -hmm. South London. Um, it's uh, the very first time I walked, you know, this is in uh, Crofton Park, uh, Broccoli, that area. When I first went there, that area was still quite run down. But you walk through the door and it is like walking in, you know, I felt like Alice in Wonderland that goes down the rabbit hole. It's uh, mm -hmm. once you get through the doors and inside there's red velvet wallpapers with, with crystal stones in it. Yeah. And the place has uh, chandeliers and also red Chinese lanterns. Lanterns, and it's just it's an amazing atmosphere. Really, mm -hmm. really busy. People are very mm -hmm. friendly, yes. very welcoming, um, and I think many people really make uh, a date. In the it used to be every first Saturday of the month mm -hmm. was the evening where there was a big dance event at the Rivoli, and people kept their diary free, uh, mm -hmm. trying to make it every month of the year. Yeah. Um, Yes, it's for me. For me, it's the same. I, I I love these dance places because dance it has been very good for me. Not just physically, for because really, really it keeps you fit. I mean, um, you you put in, you get out of dancing as much as you put in. I mean, you can do it just socially, and it's good to keep you fit, to keep you in check. But if you go for it, you just have to see professional dancers are just like sportsmen. It's just 
Yes, it's, yes. It's, it's classes in an elite yes. sport, and it's it yes, definitely it is. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. And, and as I said, I, I did it mostly because of the social aspect. For me, it was, was great. Um, as I said, I was a very, very shy person, and, and uh, dancing has helped me a lot to break through the barrier of, of my shyness. Um, and from being a person who would just go to, to a party and don't talk to anybody, basically, um, I ended up well meeting lots of people from all around the world, the world that I wouldn't have never met otherwise. I've been dancing because I like dancing a lot and I started to take it a bit more seriously and I started to go to competitions and then I joined the group uh, and I started to perform. It helped me to break the barrier of, of my shyness and I've been performing everywhere and dancing everywhere. I've been dancing in in, in airport lunches, in, in stages. The, the scariest place probably was the the um, exhibition place in Olympia, in one of these big events about dancing, the extravaganzas that they used to do once a year. And I remember that uh, the group I was dancing in, we women to dance, and the, in front of us was just a very, very energetic gr group of teenagers doing break dance. So it was really, really scary, but but you do it, and 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 I've been dancing with lots, lots of different kind of people. I mean, I've dancing with with young people, with old people, with people of all cultures and, and races, with um, tall people, short short people, gay, straight, trans, even some naked people uh, at really? some point. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to hear about that, I talk. <laughs> that leave it for the question and answers, and then, and then I, may, I may answer that question. Um, so yes, it, 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 it's been, it's been it's, it's been great, both in the physical aspect and also in the in the psychological. Yeah. Yes, I, I find that as well. I'm also not, you know, I'm, I'm naturally relatively shy and self-conscious, and dancing, <clears throat> particularly also if you don't do some competitions, you just have to put yourself out there, um, and that is something that is quite enriching and helpful, not only with dancing, uh, mm -hmm. just to accept, you know, you have learned that much. Uh, you can't do more and just go there and give it a go and uh, be self, less self-conscious and um, accepting okay. that um, you might do something not quite right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would like to, to add about this? No, I sure. don't think so. So, because probably you have had enough of listening to us, uh, we are going to do a little piece of dancing for you. For those of you who like dancing, you can watch. Don't expect great things. Um, and the fact that we've done competitions doesn't mean that we won them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but those of you who are, don't like dancing that much, you can go and have a cup of tea and come back in a couple of minutes, okay?
Okay. <laughs> what do you think on a, on a one to ten um, scale? Minus three? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no, yeah, so kind of this is, I guess, what we have done and uh, really enjoyed. And then. In, in many competitions, yes. And then COVID, COVID happened. happened, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you've heard on the news a lot about um, what happened with theatres and cinemas and, and independent ven venues during this crisis. Um, I mean, we are not going to talk about this, but a lot of could be said. Professional dancers are, are the same. A lot of them have found their, their schools and, and the shows all closed down. So it's been very, very bad for them as well. But we are going to talk about ourselves and for for us, like for more other people that really, really like dancing and dancing was their social life and the way they used to meet people and interact with people has been very, very Yeah, hard. it's kind yeah. of, I think for many people, uh, dancing was more than just, uh, you know, I, I think I tell you also mentioned that kind of through dancing we have met lots of friends and uh, so it was quite devastating that all of that fell away and often for me, also, uh, you know, dancing when I was stressed, periods, it really was a wonderful escape to cope with that uh, and then lockdown happened and all of that simply wasn't possible anymore. Um, a lot of people miss it very much. Um, dance schools were closed, um, you know, obviously there has been some adapting to the situation and there are online classes, um, which isn't quite the same, but uh, you can still keep going a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it has been very difficult for dance studios. Um, yeah. Very, very difficult. But on the other hand, uh, having to try to adapt, trying to make use of online possibilities, has also had the, ben uh, you know, the benefit that suddenly uh, well-known dance teachers that live on the other uh, side of the globe could be involved. You know, you can attend an online class mm -hmm. irrespective of where you actually are located and there yeah, are a quite thing. a few dance studios that there are some dancers that are very famous um, and they have roped them in giving uh, lessons and yeah. talking about the experience and just showing you know yes. some of the iconic moves um, yes that, that's true um, for me again I, I come back to the to the same thing i mean for me dancing is more like a social thing that i used to do because i, I enjoy that basically um and when well when the first lockdown happened of course all this went away we all have to stay at home we just um keep isolated and i thought that i would cope with that very very well because i mean i always been a person shy and sort of um, a bit scared of, of people, so I thought it would be fine with me. And then I suddenly realized that, very soon I realized that, that it was going to be quite the opposite. Um, I had, I found myself sliding back into my old self, the very, very pathologically shy person that, that found it very hard with interact with people. And, and I realized that if I don't do something about that, I will end up um, as bad as before uh, and well in the past I used to um, I suffer from depression at, at some point in the past and I was determined not to let this happen again so I realized that I needed this physical contact with people and, and the thing that I love the most and I helped me the most with that was dancing so I thought when when they told us that we could have bubbles I thought okay why I need a support bubble for dancing that's, that's the thing I need, I need, to, I need. so I asked some friends who would be like to do a, a support bubble with me and Marta said yes, so thank you very much. I mean that's, 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 it's, it's silly, it sounds silly but it's more important than, than that it, for me it's more important than, than it sounds because I really did this, this connection during a long time, I mean walking at home on the computer, the only person I have a physical contact with was Marta. Uh, so and, and it was through dancing. So so it's, it's it has helped me a lot. Um, so if anyone is thinking, okay, how can you do ballroom dancing? Um, tell the person in the bubble with you Take to, to get going <laughs> <laughs> to to dance with you. And as my friend has said, um, 
schools and teachers have adapted their, themselves at the, in the new COVID times, and there are many schools and many teachers who do things on Zoom and online, and don't think that you need to go to a hall, a dance hall, to do dancing. You can do dancing anywhere. I mean, it, you've been dancing in the park. Well, I've actually, um, uh, you, yeah, yeah, I've kind of, I've done some practice in the car park. Yes. <laughs> Kai driving past, are you all right, love? And yes, um, so yes. I mean, uh, you know, I think if people have experience with dancing, you can probably always find some space to do a little bit. It's mm -hmm. um, for me doing at least something is much better than doing nothing. And mm -hmm. I feel really lucky that I have been able yes. to bubble with you and yeah. do a lot of dancing. Um, um it's i for me the lockdown i have had um a lot of work huge amount of work but our office is closed so i do i've all the time had to work from home and uh also having this regular time every almost every mm -hmm. evening we kind of went dancing here mm -hmm. um which has been just yes. very helpful to have something that gives a little bit of a schedule of a, of a fixed point in the day um, somebody talk with and just just the, yes. the, the act of dancing of forgetting anything else mm. that's out there and trying to make it work a little bit better. Yes. Um, so yeah, yeah, and, and there are there are many friendly groups there and um, that meet for dancing or, or for lessons. And you can, as I said, you can dance in your kitchen if you are doing Latin, for example. You don't need more space than 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 a good. Um, a coffee table space. Just move the coffee table table out of the way, and that's the space you need to do to do Latin, basically to do cha cha cha. Um, so it, I would say, trade. It, it, it's 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 very good, and there are many schools out there that are, that are doing these kind of things. At the end of this event, we are going to share a document, which is a very very personal document. It's nothing exhaustive or anything. Is that something of, with some schools that that we know and we like? Uh, in case that anyone wants to try, and I know that a lot of them do things online um, as well, which is quite quite good. And it would be a good introduction to to start dancing because if if you are self conscious, you can always <laughs> press the um, the video off. Nobody has to watch you dancing it anyway. But don't worry about that anyway. As I said, I mean, um, nobody is born a dancer. The best dancers in the world, the first time that walk into a ballroom, they were rubbish, total rubbish. I mean, <laughs> you, everyone starts from zero, so don't worry about that. And and there is not uh, a bad age to start dancing. Every age is, is good. We started quite quite old, basically. We started when we were 30 a lot. Yes. Which yes. is when the professional dancers retire, so you can imagine. Um, and we are getting quite close to our half an hour event. We don't want to keep you from your dinner. So I think we are going to have some questions and answers now. If someone if somebody has any wants to, to uh, ask something and we want to. I would like to read some questions from our audience. Question number one. What is the best way to get into dancing if you're a complete beginner and a bit self-conscious? Um, uh, but Latin, I think the best would be to go to a group class. Um, I mean, there are different ways. It's, um, I, I would say first, choose some music that you like and move. Mm -hmm. And just move and keep moving and until until you get your, your own style. Don't worry. And, just, just enjoy the music and enjoy the movement. And, and if you enjoy that, you're going to enjoy the dancing later anyway. So uh, just choose some music, listen to it, and enjoy and move and do your own thing. And, and then, as my friend said, well, there are lots of online classes out there that you can just join, watch the teacher, try to repeat the steps, and, and, and you get a few steps in your head, you get your part and that's it, that's all you need to, to start dancing. But the first thing to do is just to listen to the music and enjoy it. And that's what I would say. Yeah, I Great. think it's, yeah. Sorry, Magda, did you have more to say? <laughs> She'll be <always> a reason. <laughs> 
The second question is, as you might expect, tell us about the naked people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why did I say that? Okay. <laughs> well, basically, it was it was um, a, a dancing boot camp in Scotland, uh, a place that I used to love uh, because it, if you like dancing, it is paradise. If you hate dancing, it's hell because you don't do nothing else but, but dancing the whole week. And I used to go there in Ista uh, for a week of just dancing, dancing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in, uh, more dancing and more dancing and more dancing. And there are dance, uh, there were, every evening there was a party with a theme for the party. And one evening was some um, jungle theme and everyone went dressed like Tarzan, monkeys, whatever. And there was, a person, a lady, and, and um, when I saw her first, I thought, oh, that's an amazing costume, because she looks like, look like a kind of snake from the jungle, until I realized that it was actually a tattoo. She was tattooed, basically, from the neck down in some kind of green dragon, and there was, um, she was wearing dance shoes, yes. <laughs> And then she <laughs> walked across the floor towards me and I started to sweat and then <laughs> she asked me for a dance and it's rude to say no, so I say yes <laughs> and we dance. The good thing is that while you dance ballroom, as you say, you have to keep this posture so you look away from your partner and I have thank God for that. <laughs> so I just, just could look away on the mid middle distance and we did the, the dance and, and that's that was okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was, yeah. Thank you. But but I wait. I mean, just we all knew each other more or less, <laughs> and we knew each other much better after that. <laughs> so no no problem. So there's another comment which isn't a question, but it's a clap times ten, and that's from J K. So that's a big thumbs up. And from Sean, another 10, another big thumbs up. So the next question is, what is the hardest dance to learn? In, I think in, in, you know, ballroom dancing, the type that we do, usually you have the Latin dances and you have the more ballroom dances. And I think the ballroom dances is probably foxtrot. And in Latin, I would say it's samba. Yeah, I agree. And, 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 and the yeah. reason the reason is that Foxtrot is using this uh, See, swing yeah. music, kind of just the way you use the rhythm and how one is meant to go up and down with the body. It's just quite yes. difficult to um, to um, to learn. Yes. yes. The ballroom, they, I mean, Foxtrot, they call it a dancer's dance. Because well, all the other dances, of course, they are very elaborate and, and dancers have evolved them into something spectacular. But most of them, you can go back to a, some popular kind of style of dance that people, normal people used to dance in the, in the street or whatever, to music, is that it got better and better and better. In the case of Foxtrot, um, it was just made up by dancers from the beginning. So it was already complicated <laughs> uh, as it started. And, and it's a very expressive dance as well. And in samba, it's just because the rhythm is hellish. <laughs> so how many different rhythms have samba? Samba, yeah, samba is difficult because the way you use the rhythm of the music, the different ways to express it with the, with the, with the body, I, I don't know. I yes. don't know if, uh, and it can switch from one way of dancing to the other. Yes, uh, okay. And yeah. also, I think just technically, how one is meant to move the body weight from one foot to the other is quite uh, quite tricky. Yeah. Perhaps the next dance you do for us will be a foxtrot followed by a samba. <laughs> yes, yes, actually, it's one, it's one of our favorite ones. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard, but it's, it's very good. Don't ask a dancer to, to, to talk about dancing because we will just go on forever. <laughs> so there's another message from Katie, 
which says it's a 10 from Len. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and another question, have you ever danced in the famous Blackpool Ballroom? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Several times. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's really. I mean, I I had been dancing for quite some years before I got for the first time to to Blackpool, and it's it's like the mecca for dancers, and yes. it's both the, the the you know there's both the Tower Ballroom and the Winter Gardens. Which is even bigger. <laughs> and they're both wonderful. Yes. Um, and if someone can devise a way in which having proper competitions that can be done in a, in a social distancing way, we would very much like to hear um, because, because of course, there are competitions that are happening online and we've done one yes. and it's all done in Zoom and you can see all the judges there uh, on the little squares and you are waiting and then they call your name and, and you walk onto your kitchen <laughs> or wherever <laughs> place you are dancing and, and, and you do your thing. And then they say thank you very much and that's it and you don't hear the clapping which is the most annoying thing <laughs> the admiration of the crowds is the thing that i miss the most <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah but it happens yes but 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 um yeah the bus of a the bus of the competition of, yes. uh, is, is uh, that's actually also something kind of just learning to dance and um, at the beginning, I was also very self-conscious. Somebody asked that. I think just trying to focus on its nice music and that you would love to learn it, and uh, you know, um, focus more on that rather than the self-consciousness, and then really learning to to do competitions and uh, just go for it. It's it's then it can be uh, give quite a buzz doing it. Yeah, it is lovely. There's another question from Katie. Which dancers did you admire when you were growing up? <laughs> I, I, I myself grew up uh, really, you know, I, I did this 10 week course that my parents sent me to. And I had this friend and we were just, you know, kind of sad, just playing dodgems, <laughs> kind of hopping about and uh, dancing as such really wasn't um, on my horizon. Yeah. I came to it when a friend colleague dragged me to a dance school here in London because she wanted, actually that's a good thing, if you can friend, find a friend to do the dancing together with to get started, it's a really good way. Um, mm -hmm. just to give each other a little bit of yeah. support um, and she dragged me longer than I was hooked and I don't know which ones do I admire now, there are uh, quite a lot of different ones I think who are mm -hmm. wonderful dancers. Um, I don't yes. know, did you? Well, I, I never came across dancing until <coughs> I came to, to London so I didn't know anything about dancing. I didn't know that, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't know you could make a living out of that. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, the way I grew up, I'm also kind of like you know, I think a lot of people might be familiar with ballet. Uh, the way I grew up, that was also not something I was exposed to. Um, so now I, you know, because dancing, it's not only ballroom and Latin dancing. I also very much enjoy looking at other dance forms. Um, so yeah. So yeah, no. And. Can you tell a great dancer even when they aren't dancing? So when they're just standing still or walking? Yeah, well, it depends. Uh, if they are standing still, it's tricky. But And if they are, um, I mean, a great dancer really, uh, dancing is movement and movement in a very controlled way. And the bottom line dance we do is just doing that in a very controlled, easy way and having fantastic balance, that really is what makes mm -hmm. a great dancer. And sometimes um, you have to see a dancer move a little bit, not necessarily really dancing properly full out, but just mm -hmm. moving a little bit so you can see how they control yes. their movement. But, but take into account that ballroom dancing is something that you don't do with a great dancer, you do it with two great dancers dancing together. What happens when you have a great dancer and someone who is not so good? Well, there are great dancers that just cannot dance properly with with someone who is not good, and and um, and that's something that a bit annoying. Because okay, when you are dancing socially with other man friends, remember remember that the goal of dancing is not the same as playing football, in which is you against the other team. 
to win them. No, uh, to defeat them. No, it's you and your partner working together to do something nice. Mm -hmm. So you may be a great dancer, but if your partner is not so good, you have to be great enough to adapt yourself to the quality of your dancer. So both of you Look do big. something together that looks nice and not looking as if you are fighting one another. Mm -hmm. You can see some very old couples that are very, very old and they are not very graceful or not very you energetic. Know, some, sometimes they are still very graceful. But I mean, because they know each other and they know how they move each other, both of them look good. Yes. Yeah. I, th I think sometimes, I mean, sometimes you can see just in, in, in the way people walk a little bit that they are, that they might be dancers and posture is also very important in dancing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, definitely, it's very you know whether they are a really good dancer. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Thank you. Someone said, "No question, but really loved the dance." And someone else says, and this is the last question: Could you dance a bit more for us before we go? You dance beautifully together. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, um, like in the cookery programs, there is something that we have prepared earlier for you uh, that we hope that you are going to enjoy. It, it is something that we actually did for an online competition, a little video that you record, send off, and they tell you, okay, first, second, third. Yeah, it's kind of, and it is, uh, we had a little bit of preparation to do for that, and uh, that was fun. <laughs> so we hope that you are going to, to enjoy it because I think we are running out of time now and we don't want to uh, entertain you much. Remember, this is just the second of the series and there are more coming up. The next one is about piano uh, playing. Uh, so join us next next month um, for the next one. And I hope that you have enjoyed that. And if someone decides to have a go at dancing, that would be a great thing as well. It's, and, it's, and it's very enrich enriching. It's really enriching. Wonderful. So thank you, Aitor and Magda, and thank you all for coming from us at Charing Cross. I can see me